Incident number one in the life of Elizabeth occurred the time she sent the message in Morse code. Then she sent it again. Would you say that's a form of remorse? <laughs> no, I guess you wouldn't. Elizabeth, shouldn't you be cooking dinner? You threw the dinner out. Oh, you're going to eat out. Well, now's a good time to tell Alvin. Here he comes with a lot of packages. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, honey. Alvin. What's the matter? My slip showing? <laughs> I guess I was a little startled. I didn't expect... I didn't know you'd been drafted. Hi, matey. What is cooking in the galley? There's nothing <laughs> cooking in the alley. We're eating out. Galley, not alley. You don't mind, do you, darling? This is a sextant. <laughs> I didn't think it was the vicar. Hey, look, honey. Look. Wait a minute. How do you think I'd look in a sailor suit? Well, fine, darling. Of course, we could always take the, the cloth from the bell-bottom trousers and sew it up higher where you need it. <laughs> Are you going to start that again? <laughs> Well, suppose you waddle over here on your sea legs and explain the yachting cap. Hey, that's right. I didn't tell you, did I? No, well, sailor's wife is always the last now, to know. Oh, now look, honey. Ted Simpson called me this afternoon, and guess what? He's going into the Navy, too. Elizabeth. Well, don't ask me to guess if you don't want me to guess. I don't want you to guess. He called to tell me he bought a schooner. A schooner? It's a boat. Yeah, he bought it from a Danish sea captain, and he wants us to share it with him. Oh, but let's sail to Catalina, just the two of us. Exactly what I had in mind. That's why I borrowed all the stuff. <laughs> well, what do you have? Oh, look at it. Got all sorts of goodies here. What are these, maps? Yes, sir. Sharks, instruments. How are we going to sail to Catalina? Through the Panama Canal? <laughs> <laughs> look, honey, you don't understand. Look, a good oh. sailor should be able to box a compass, take an azimuth reading, shoot the stars, and stuff like that. If we go by nautical procedure. And I'll wait. Wait, for what? For hilarious jokes, you know, about boxing the compass, shooting the stars, and all the rest of it. Me? You. No. Good. <laughs> what is this thing, darling? Looks like a telescope with a hangar. I told you before, it's a sextant. Now, look, honey, a schooner's a big sailing boat, and if we're gonna it's borrow it... It's a mirror. Wait, Elizabeth, honey, stop clowning. If we're gonna borrow it, we Wouldn't got... it be funny if it turned out to be a boat in a bottle? Elizabeth. <laughs> Now, look, if we're going to borrow the boat, we've got a lot to learn in a very short time. So let's do it like good sailors, okay? okay. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye. No. Did I, aye, tell you, you, that you, you, and I, I are going out to dinner, dinner? Elizabeth! <laughs> now, look, what's the first thing you do when you go aboard ship? I don't feel so good. You chart your course. Would you do what you want to do? I don't feel so good. Elizabeth! <laughs> Exactly like Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> Elizabeth, I refuse to let you get under my skin. And furthermore, I intend to retain control of my every faculty. <laughs> well, don't let your student body get out of hand, either. <laughs> Seriously, darling, what's this used for? A sextant, my dear, is used to obtain the angle between two objects. Thus, one is able to determine one's position by latitude or longitude. <laughs> You mean you have to go through all that to find out where you are? That's the way navigators do it. Do you have a better way? Sure. Ask a policeman. <laughs> oh, fine. I suppose there's always one riding by on his seahorse. Seahorse? <laughs> well, now, we're going to sail to Catalina. We have to. Funny. We can't afford a clown. Look, honey, I... Oh, well. Now, let me... i got to mark my little course here. I'll pretend the lamp is a star, the wind is the horizon. Bring the objects into coincidence here. Let's see. Well, the object should be on the ark. Hey, honey, look, I got it. Look, take a look. <laughs> hey, let's see. Right here. Aye, aye. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> I don't know what channel I've got, but Liberace's smiling at me. <laughs> Elizabeth, you're looking at the Venetian blinds. Look, I lined it up in there. See, it's right there. Well, what's our position? Well, we're right in the center of the room. You had to go through all that to discover we're in the den? Bring the object into exact coincidence. We're only pretending and practicing. 
Now, let's well, see. don't bother. With you at the helm, there's only one direction the boat can go. Straight down. <laughs> Elizabeth, come here. <laughs> Elizabeth, you have disobeyed me, and I shall brook no mutiny aboard my ship. If you do it again, I shall have you hang from the highest yard arm. Oh, you know something? Just like Charles Lawton, huh? <laughs> no, huh? when you do that, you look exactly like Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> All right, let's back to the maps. Right. Now, let's see. We leave San Pedro Harbor. We'll head straight to Catalina. We ought to get our Can I tell you we're eating up? Get a pencil and mark this down. The scale is one inch to the 100 miles. Longitude, 87 degrees. Longitude, 87 degrees. Latitude, 42 degrees. Latitude, 42 degrees. West by southwest. West by southwest. Okay, draw your lines, get your reading by, uh, cross, uh, no, draw your lines and get your, well, draw your lines. <laughs> now, draw them off and find your position by using cross bearing. <laughs> okay, what's our course? Well, according to this, we're sailing by a surplus store on Hollywood and Vine. What? You're kidding me, aren't you, Elizabeth? You goofed and you're covering up? I'll do the navigating. Now, look, you were a Girl Scout. Do you remember the Morse code? A little why? Well, so far you can't fix a position and you can't navigate, so I thought I'd let you operate the radio. You know, the thing that scares me is there isn't a surplus store at Hollywood and Vine. Yeah. Now, we'll brush up on our Morse code. I'll send a message you decipher. Stay right there. All righty. Here we go. Ready? Mm hmm Alvin! You could wash your mouth out with soap. I didn't say a thing. Well, then wash your hands with soap. Oh, for goodness sake. You send me a message. Okay. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Man's soul is equal only to his eternal spirit. What does that mean? How should I know? I'm no philosopher. Send me another message. <laughs> okay. Got it? Yeah. Sauce. Not sauce. S-O-S. I'll get it. If you lose your way, call the Coast Guard. <laughs> the character's sauce. So that's... Honey? Hmm? This just arrived. Yeah, I figured that out myself. What's in it? Open it up. Oh. <laughs> Dear Alvin, hmm? had to leave town but knew you'd want to see Schooner. Don't break it. It's from Ted Simpson. Don't break it. That turns out to be a throat and a bottle. She knew it couldn't be, huh? Right. Alvin, we've been scuttled. It's extremely all right. Well, the least he could do is fill it. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. One more, one more message here. Last call for dinner. Where? Out. Let's go. Fine. Good. <laughs> Come on. That's what I want to do anyway. Good morning. Elizabeth. Have a nice dinner. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And in just a moment, we'll bring you incident number two in Life with Elizabeth. Incident number two in the life of Elizabeth occurred when they got their first TV set. Inasmuch as they were among the very first to buy a set, their problems may have been a little bit different from what yours were when you got one. Remember the early days of TV? Elizabeth, I'm home. Honey, I'm home. It's here. Alvin, the television set's here. That's what I said. Look, I know that's what I just said. I've been watching it all afternoon. It's the most fascinating thing I've ever seen in my life. For the last three hours, I've been sitting yeah. there. Honey, I, they brought it about 3 o'clock this afternoon. And I just when I'd given up hope, I was going to take those bottles back to the market. You know? And this truck pulled up out in front. And this nice looking fellow jumped out, all spick and span, in a white uniform and everything. You know? yeah. Honey, well, let me tell you about yeah, it. And he comes I... up at the door and he gives this little bow. Well, and he I... says, is this a fortunate family that's about to have the first TV set in this part of town? Well, I almost sent him away until he explained the TV was short for television. It took three men to carry it in. Well, honey, how can you be so blase? But I couldn't wait to see 
yet. Well, honey, you didn't have a magpie blocking you every time I wanted to get a chance. Oh, honey, look, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Oh, honey, look. The picture's here, honey. I know, honey, but I'm just taking it off. Oh, this, what is this thing? Oh, that's the Mark Wilson pointer. Oh, that got past me. Well, he said if you point this at Mark Wilson, they send us a signal. Send us a signal? I think I made a fool of myself. I told him we didn't play with trains. Well, honey, what I think he meant was that the, the, the signal comes from a transmitter on top of Mount Wilson. <laughs> What's in here? What's this? Oh, that's just full of light bulbs. But don't you want to see the picture? Yeah, but I want to see how it works, honey. Let's You're see. not supposed to touch it. Look. Oh, honey, it's fantastic. Look, just fantastic, that's all. And just think that's going on right this very minute. And if you turn off the lights, it gets even clearer. Honey, this is going on right this very minute. R right while we watch it. This wasn't filmed three months ago, you know, honey. This is happening right this minute. I know it. I've been watching it all afternoon. Oh, gee, look. I'll turn off the lights. I get the Did lights. you see this? No, this, this little knob gives you light and dark. See? No kidding. Let me try it. Let me try it. How about that? <laughs> that knocks me out is that's happening right this very minute. Not an hour ago or not 10 minutes ago, but right this very minute. Uh, what is it? <laughs> well, anyway, whatever it is, it's happening right this very minute. Why didn't you ask Spick and Span Harry when he was here what it was? I did. He said it's um, a test pattern. Test pattern. Uh -huh. I didn't want to ask him what a test pattern was. I made such a fool of myself about the train signals. Well, I'd say right offhand, not knowing too much about it, that a test pattern is some sort of a pattern for testing. Uh-huh. It's not supposed to move or anything. D do you realize this is happening this very minute? Uh -huh. Well, it's been happening this very minute for the last three hours. Shouldn't the picture come on? You're probably at 6 o'clock. What station is that? They call them channels. This is W6AVX3LATV Channel 1. Sounds like a canyon. Let's try another one. It's no use. That's it. One channel? Well, maybe there's not much room on top of Mount Wilson. Oh. Are we supposed to be this close to the set? Uh, you mean we're spending all of that money for just... Hey, hey, look, test pattern flickered. Look at that. No, no, he explained that, honey. Sometimes the deer chew on the cables up on that wood. Are we supposed to be this close to the set? No. No, not with that big five-inch screen. Come here. Isn't that a beauty? Isn't that... Let me show you how clear it is. Look, see that? Clear as a bell. Good evening. This is Channel hey, One, hey, on. station hey, W6AVX3LA TV. <laughs> Which way is it? Well, the seventh now. Seven. Seven. One, One, two, three, four. Three, four. You got it. You got it. Yeah. We are telecasting from our downtown studios with our transmitter atop Mount Wilson. Telecasting. We would appreciate a card or letter telling us how well you receive our programs. The test pattern you are looking at right now is it's for the. It's clear as a bell. <laughs> Well, I know it, <laughs> but it just seems like magic. We'll send him a card or something. Listen. We'd like you to stand by for just one moment for the telecast of our visual playlet, Cambodia, as soon as they're ready in Studio One. Visual playlet. Oh, gee. Take it away, Studio One. Just think, honey, we're going to see a picture right in our very own room. Yeah, yeah. Go, mm -hmm. Take it away, Studio One. They seem to be having strain in Studio One. You have to remember this is new media now. Bugs and... Will Studio One kindly take it away? Now you have to remember that the, the, uh, this is a new medium, you know. Oh, sure, sure. Bugs. Everything's set now, ladies and gentlemen. Channel One invites you to enjoy tonight's visual playlet, Cambodia. Take it away, Studio One. Are we on the air, Harry? Adam, I know! We're still getting the test pattern. Oh, honey, maybe I better go call them before they start swearing at each other. Yeah, listen. Will Studio One kindly take it away? We took it away. The cheap camera's busted. We out of the air. Who cares? If somebody beat the stupid deer up on Mount Wilson.
Johnson weighed me. <laughs> Due to conditions beyond our control, the visual part of our program has been thoroughly gummed up. Try again tomorrow. Good night, all. That's television, huh? Now, Elizabeth, we're taking this set back first thing in the morning. Well, honey, I can't argue with you. It's just a big, expensive toy. We're going to have to eat out. I spent all afternoon watching the test pattern. Elizabeth, if I thought television had a future, I would say keep. Where are we going to eat? Hmm? Elizabeth? Mama said television was nothing but stereoptican with sound. I wouldn't listen to it. Oh, how right she is. It couldn't possibly amount to anything. How's Tony's Italian restaurant? Fine. They have television. Oh, well, television? <laughs> We'll bring you incident number three in Life with Elizabeth. Incident number three in the life of Elizabeth occurred the day of the ping pong war. Oh yes, there was a ping pong war at 123 Elm Street on a certain Sunday a couple of months ago. Want to see it? Ready. <laughs> I win 21 17. Oh, you really did it to me. I'm glad it makes you happy. Oh, it's nothing. Ice coffee for all hands. What do you think? I just beat Bulldog 21 17. Had him floundering around like a sick walrus. Well, I love the modest way you announce it. Oh, for no, I'll give him credit, Elizabeth. He beat me fire and square. Thank you. Lisa. He had me 17 to 12. All of a sudden, I gave him the old reverse English, and whoa, brother, that did it. <laughs> That's one good thing about Alvin. He may not be able to back the car out of the garage, but he sure can. And reverse his English. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the sugar? I, yeah, I put it in the, in the coffee. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Ah, what a game, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, any old time. <laughs> hey, not enough sugar? Oh, here, I'll get it. No, sit still. I'll get no, it. No, you stay right Wait a minute. I'll get it. One of the rules, loser got the sugar. Yeah, I know. Boy, did I wallop him. No kidding, he had be 17 to 12, and all of a sudden, ka wham <laughs> well, That's another thing I love about you, darling. You're not only a bad loser, but you're an insufferable winner. <laughs> oh, he doesn't mind. <laughs> he has the most wonderful disposition I have ever... Doesn't he ever lose his temper? No, nope, even in the Army. Over here, Garcon. Here you are, Elizabeth. Thank you. Uh... What was that about the Army? Oh, Alvin was just saying you never really lose your temper. Well, I find it doesn't pay. Where'd the name Bulldog come from? Oh, I used to fight a little, but I never really got mad. You remember how happy you were when you threw the sergeant in the ditch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still think you're well and a much nicer name than Bulldog. Well, but I can't reach the bottom of this glass with a stupid spoon. <laughs> well, any other time, you wouldn't think twice about getting your knuckles wet. Here, wait a minute. We have the same problem at our house. Tall glasses and short spoons, you know. <laughs> there we are. Now, stir. Clever, huh? Wow. Well. Darling, you're not, not a ruffled temper. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Richard. Hi, Richard. Come on in and join us in some short spoon coffee. Okay, but I can only stay for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> you never know with Richard. Look, he helped me build the fence, and at the time, there was no gate. He just forgot, that's all. <laughs> the gate has been there for four years. Llewellyn, have you ever met Richard? I don't believe so. Oh, you have a treat in store for you. We love well, him, He's but... not stupid. If so happens, you keep him so mixed. Oh, hi, Richard. Oh, hi, kid. Hi, hi Alvin. Hi, oh, Elizabeth. Hi. Hi, uh, Richard Munch, Llewellyn Smith. Hi. Hello. Nice to know you. Thank you. How about some coffee, Richard? I'll get some. Uh, no, thanks. I don't drink. <laughs> We're about to get a classic remark. <laughs> Dime says he makes sense. You're on. <laughs> Say, that's a cute idea. What is, Richard? Dishes with handles on them. Um, is he kidding? It just so happens he's never seen a ping pong set before, that's all. It's just a game, Richard. It's, it's kind of like tennis. Oh. You have the net and the ball, and, the, and the, this is sort of like a racket. Would you like to learn to play? Sure. Me? All right, you stand right over there. Now, this dish with the handle on it is a, is a paddle. Uh -huh. It's sort of a bat. Pick it up. Oh. Now, no, no, no. Now, not around and around, just, just around. 
way you play ping pong. You're not digging bitches. This isn't the anvil car. It's ping pong, ping, stupid pong. Take it easy. This is my table. There's nothing wrong with his wrist. Quiet. <laughs> what are you giggling about? Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Well, welcome to the human race. That's what I thought. Hey, 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 say goodbye to the people. Bye, bye, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. You know, Richard told Elizabeth that after all, stupidity is, is only relative. The only trouble is you should see some of his relatives. <laughs> Be with us again next week, will you? And in the meantime, once again, goodbye, everybody.